Uh, greetings and welcome to uh, Bears on Film, in which two white guys will give their opinion on stuff because the world doesn't have any of that. How are you, Billy? I'm not too bad. How are you, Tove? I'm doing well. We've are got- you still doing well after the weekend? Because you did message me saying that you had had the worst film day of your life. I did, and part of that was, a lot of that was to do with what we're here to talk about, <laughs> being the new superhero team-up event, Justice League. Justice League, yeah. So we did. We saw this separately. We did. You saw it on Saturday. I had previously seen it on Thursday. Yep. I was not gagging to see this film. <laughs> I mean, I was. I mean, obviously, I saw it on opening day. So I guess that says enough. It's. I. I would not have done that had the opportunity not just been there for me to do it. Yeah. But. Uh, but I was excited. I, I was. Like, I was all in. I used movie vouchers to see it, and on the strength of what Warner Brothers has dished up in this cinematic universe, I got to say. I would not have paid to see this yeah. film. See, we're very different, though. I'll see any old shit. Yeah. I literally last week saw Bad Mums 2. Loved every second of it. I'm happy, I'm happy for <laughs> so, you. Um, all right, should we just dive right in? We should. Give me, give me some opening thoughts. All right, look, I liked it. I mean, I, I said that to you on Friday after I said that uh, I had no beef with it. It was fun. It was, like I said to you, this was closer to Wonder Woman than it was to Man of Steel or Batman vs Superman. And that's not to say that it was anywhere near as good as Wonder Woman, because it wasn't. As a film, it's not very good. But I had fun while I was sitting there. And maybe it's because I was meant to be at work. I don't know if you remember, I said I had an appointment at 12 <laughs> and I ducked off. <laughs> I, do, was, I was, do remember that. There was no appointment. Um, and maybe that's why I enjoyed myself as much as I did. Um... But all in all, I, I, there weren't that many problems with it that took it out for me. Hmm. Um, that's kind of my broad overview of it. Uh, w- what happened with you? Like, What happened with me was that I saw this film on a Saturday morning, cold sober, and <laughs> I wish that it hadn't been so, because <laughs> this film <laughs> is terrible. <laughs> this I, film I, is bad. <laughs> I, I don't see how you... Like, when you message me, I'm pretty sure... Am I remembering right that you said it was with Suicide Squad for you? I have this film. Okay, we, we, I imagine we're both in agreement here that in in the the ladder, if you will, yeah. of, of DC Cinematic Universe films, everyone's got Wonder Woman at the top, as you would. Everyone's got Suicide Squad at the bottom, as you would. Yeah, I Oscar, have, Oscar winning <laughs> Suicide Squad. Oscar, I think Oscar we need to winning refer to film, it as the Academy Award winning film. Suicide Squad. In case Squad. the Academy hadn't embarrassed themselves <laughs> enough, Oscar winning film, Suicide Squad. Yeah. I have this film closer to Suicide Squad than any other entry into the DCEU. I don't even understand how that's possible because to me, Man of Steel is so low and close Mm. to Suicide Squad that for this to even jam between those two, I don't see how that's even possible. Yeah, see, I um, I mean, I don't think that Man of Steel is good, but I think it works as a movie, just not a particularly good one. I mean, see, you get, because... And this is obviously where we disagree, because Suicide Squad... I'm ne- I'm not going to defend that movie. Terrible movie. But you know what? At no point during that movie did I think I can't sit here and watch this. It I had an enjoyable experience watching that film. It w- I will never watch it again, and I'm not going to recommend others watch it. <laughs> but I I thought it was it, it at least unlike Man of Steel, it had some sense of fun to it. And sure, it was misguided. It? it was misguided fun. It didn't always land. Misguided fun, like like what arson. <laughs> <laughs> well, it didn't always land what it was trying to achieve, but at least it was trying to have more fun than any DC Universe film before it had done. Well, well here's one of the things that I actually think that, that Warner Brothers have just like wrapped themselves around the tree with, is not being able to decide what these films are. Well, this is the problem, because the, the films were born out of a competition with Marvel. That's all they are. Absolutely. Like, Warner Brothers and the diehard, blinded by loyalty DC fans can jump up and down all they want and say, we're not trying to be Marvel. Crap. <laughs> yeah. This film is their Avengers. They've been working to... And, you know, like, well, for all... But this is the difference, is that they haven't been working towards it. Man of Steel was, I mean, what, five years ago, Tops? Yeah. There have been maybe five DC movies, and we're straight into... And, okay, here's one of my main gripes. How much am I supposed to care about these characters? So, you know so, so far we've had 
S- Superman, who yeah. is dead, has had his own film. Yeah. Wonder Woman has had her own film. Yeah. Batman was a central character in a film. And then there's three more people who have been teased because it was commercially the right thing to do. But Look, what I attachment mean, am I supposed to have to these people? I mean, and this is where I give a lot Sorry, of... Sorry, meta-humans? <laughs> oh, thank you for getting the terminology correct. This is where I actually give a lot of kudos to the actors for this, because even aside from Wonder Woman, which was a good movie, Gal Gadot is great. She, you know, she takes a role that isn't really that well written, and she makes you care about her. And honestly, so you will about Affleck. He was the bomb in Phantoms, and he's the bomb in this. <laughs> I, Affleck, okay, I I'm think... actually gonna. I actually am gonna disagree with you there. See, that makes no sense to me. See, because I was... I, I, I've said this many times to you, and I know that this is gonna turn into a fight. But Affleck is the best Batman we've had on film, apart from Will Arnett. I re- <laughs> will Arnett clearly top of the heap. I really liked Affleck in Batman vs Superman. Yeah. Dawn of Cash Money. <laughs> yeah. Um, in this film. I thought he looked bored. And he looks he looked like a guy with one foot out the door, which we all kind of know is true. I don't know. Honestly, I'm hoping that... I mean, I don't have a lot of faith. I know that this movie hasn't performed as well as Warner Brothers and DC would have hoped. I really hope that from this film he now decides not to back out. Because I think he is one of the things that He probably shouldn't watch the film then. (laughs) (laughs) I think that he is one of the things that shows how strong this universe could be. I think he's a good Batman, he's a good Bruce Wayne, we know he's a good director. And I think um, we also know, just anecdotally, that he actually does care about the subject matter. That's true. He was introduced to comic books by Kevin Smith. And uh, from what has been said multiple times, you know, Dark Knight Returns was the first book he ever read. And when he read it, he said, I want to do that one day. Mm. You know, and it's a shame that I think Batman vs. Superman... I mean, you only need to see that meme video of him, you know, reacting to that person sad, asking about Sad, bad Yeah. To know, I think, how much... How disappointed he was by that. And mm. I really hope that he sticks around because I think he could continue to make this better. And I think... I thought Ezra Miller... I don't really know who that dude is but I thought he was great as the Flash and I thought the Flash was mm. one of the best things of this movie even though we haven't been introduced to him. Alright well let's move on to our, not, our next point of contention here. <laughs> oh so you didn't like the Flash? The Flash was terrible um, Whoa. and not not Ezra Miller's fault Okay, uh, in, in my opinion it's like okay so we have Batman vs Superman and like so much of the talk around Batman vs Superman was that it was the wrong tone I think that's an absolute load of garbage if you want to go dark with it, that's fine. Oh, I agree, absolutely. I think going dark no, with it No was... one says about the Dark Knight, oh, should we be more jokes? No. <laughs> like... I, I think going dark with it was a smart choice because th- to separate themselves from Marvel. And I think part of the problem when you look at Suicide Squad, I think the issue they had there is that they started off going dark with it and then at some point during that production, Guardians of the Galaxy came out and they said, nope, we have to do that. Mm. And so they changed their tone completely and what you ended up with was this complete mess of a film Mm. and I don't think there's any problem with going dark with it my problem with Batman vs Superman was more I don't even know how to describe it just that it was clunky I guess the pacing was off I've heard that the Mm. extended cut is a lot better everything everything about a a, a number of these DC films is that it feels like there was a committee in the edit room yeah absolutely absolutely and Zack Snyder's vision for Man of Steel may be flawed. It may not be your cup of tea. At least it's a coherent Well and cup I must I must say that was the one thing about fifteen minutes into Justice League, because I I don't know whether I knew this and had forgotten it, but I was surprised to see Joss Whedon getting credited as a co writer. Co writer. In with first, only one other writer. First thing well. I thought about the film was that it was interesting that it came up as Directed by Zack Snyder. I'd been wondering if it was going to be a co yeah. credit or See, something. Obviously, this. if and anyone doesn't know, Snyder had to leave the project before yeah. the pickups and reshoots under really sad circumstances. And, and Joss Whedon took over, firstly, as he's someone we think we can who can tell a story yeah. well, and also we want this to be funnier. No, and this was the thing. 15 minutes in, I started wondering because I saw his name come up as co-writer, didn't see it as as director at all, and it really got me I would be very curious to know what the split is. Mm. Because about 15 minutes in, I thought to myself, I don't know exactly what Joss was involved in here and what he wasn't. It didn't feel like a Joss film, but there 
you know, and there were. It moments, feels more Snyder than Weedon. Yeah, there were mo- sure. there were moments of dialogue there where I was like, that seems kind of Weedony, but it's it's cheesier than Weedon mm-hmm. would write. The dialogue I thought was was clunky in this. That was one of my things. Was especially twenty minutes in, I found myself going, "This dialogue is there's is one odd." There's one scene in particular where Amy Adams is speaking to Martha. <laughs> uh, so you've got Amy Adams dying late. That's too really accomplished performers right there yeah it's a shame that and they are delivering so the clunkiest most terrible it's a terrible scene see but this it's, is it's the... like that scene is only there because those people were contractually obliged to be in this film so we have to write a scene in for them and it sucks see but this scene, this is my problem with with Lois Lane as a whole throughout this whole DC universe is I feel like she's only there for that very reason because it was like well we have to do something with this character mm. and I don't think they've done anything good with Lois in any capacity in any of these films and, and once what are you again, talking about she, she told Batman that Martha was <laughs> oh, that's right. his mum's name Martha yeah. without her the Martha that... scene I mean it would have been embarrassing <laughs> <laughs> I mean she again is my biggest problem with this with this film her and Aquaman who I guess we'll get to later because oh, man, we, she, we, she's we not even she's nowhere near it <laughs> because we've kind of sidetracked here from the Flash now I liked the Flash I know that he was the comic relief but I thought particularly with both Flash and Cyborg um, yes, they were the two that we haven't seen before, but I felt they actually did a pretty good job of giving these two characters some kind of motivation and making them feel a little bit more fleshed out. In a lot of ways, they're more fleshed out than even Batman, who we have seen in another film. And I guess people are relying on the fact that Batman is Batman, and we know Batman through years. But like, I thought they did a pretty good job with Flash and Cyborg. I was pretty happy with how they were handled. So here's my... my- giant beef with the Flash character. Ezra Miller, fine. A problem that extends beyond this film. It's a thing that happens in films which I just hate. When when it's decided this film needs to be more fun and all of that is going to be done on by this character. character. Yeah. So rather than getting a film that is just more fun, you get this one guy like cracking wise, and his lines weren't good. Yet one guy <laughs> well, that, cracking a- wise while the Earth's ending around him. Yeah. And it's clunky as. See, but that's what I was... I, as much as I had fun watching this... And I'm, I'll get to what I rated it later because I know that you're going to want to kind of stab me in the face when we get to that point. But the dialogue was clunky the whole way through. I don't, I don't think there was a single scene in this where I thought, oh, this is good dialogue. But you know what? I don't think there have been that many Marvel films either where I've thought they've had ex- exceptional dialogue. True. And, and I think at least as far but as the DC... I'm not suggesting that the Marvel films deserve Oscar nominations for the best screenplay. Well, like, they're, they're not Academy Award winner unlike, Suicide unlike Squad. Unlike Suicide Squad. <laughs> <laughs> I think, um, you know, the thing with this is that at least unlike the other DC films we've had so far, this was coherent. And I think it had good pacing, it had good flow. It was short, some would say too short, but I... I don't think there was anything where I went, I, I wish they had gone deeper into that or deeper into this. Because at the end of the day, it's not that kind of movie. It's You're just meant to enjoy the ride, and I certainly did. Can we talk about your area of expertise, visual effects? Yes. You're a yes. visual effects artist? I am. I have one credit. <laughs> <laughs> That's one more than me. Um, the visual effects in this film are terrible. See, it's so funny you say that, because I... Did not notice that. I, and I know that, that this, first, is, that this first, is supposed to be my job, and I didn't notice it at all. That the first night, shot of Wonder Woman, that was like <laughs> a chroma key effort that I could yeah, have done. See, it I was think, terrible. I think I was just having so much fun with it that I didn't notice. And then that night, I was scrolling through the thread on Reddit about Justice League, and someone posted a gif of Cyborg in this film. And, <laughs> I mean, his armour... He's got bits that are intersecting with other bits and floating in and out, and it's absolutely shocking. But I did not notice that on the giant screen mm. of the cinema. And, yeah, I might never work in the industry Ugh. again after saying Some that. Some of the chroma key work notice. in this film is abysmal. And also, the, the big world-ending event, yep. those rock tentacle things that are chasing generic Eastern Europeans... Okay, now that actually, that, and that was the one side plot too, where I was like, okay, I are we supposed to care about these European yeah, people? Yeah, because geez, I don't. 
I really don't. I <laughs> just don't. not I, a race thing. Uh, well, I mean, no. I mean, be European all you want. That's your choice. That's, you know, I, for me, it was. Like, I kept expecting something to happen there. That little girl. I thought, okay, so she's going to. You know, like when she got out the bug spray. That's actually. That was actually kind of. That was a cool moment. But I was like, okay, she's going to do something here that's that's going to help the Justice League. Hmm. That no. never happened. No. And that was the one thing that kind of left me a little bit like, what? Um. It seems weird having this conversation because to, I don't think I've really said many positive things about this film at all, which is surprising because, like I said, I enjoyed it. One thing I really didn't like, <laughs> continuing to talk about things I don't like, was Aquaman. He was or, such sorry, a is bro. he Aquaman? He was Landman mostly. <laughs> that, that, I'm <laughs> so glad you said that because that was, and I said that to my wife when I got home. I said the weirdest thing about Aquaman is he seems to have fucking powers up on land. Yeah, he was in water for maybe. Oh god! Two minutes? Yeah, of his entire screen time, and he's on screen quite a bit. Mm. He does very little underwater, and he seems—he's basically a god. He—he's like—he's like Wonder Woman, yeah. Basically, like he's not—he doesn't just talk to fish and control fish. He seems to have other abilities, which I found really. Str- and also, I like Jason Momoa. I did not think he was right for this. I think he. I think it was a really. Weird I understand the casting because in. if you look at like you look at Aquaman in the comics, you're like, <laughs> you're you're not impressive. Uh, look, yeah, I get that that they went in a different way, but it was, it's like at that point, why even use that character? DC have so many characters mm. they could have gone to, and okay, I get not using Green Lantern because of the sour taste. Although I got to say, the kind of twenty seconds we did get of Green Lantern in this were better than the 90 minutes we got of Green Lantern a couple of years ago. I never, I didn't subject myself to that Green Lantern film. <laughs> well, when, like, what? when even you're <laughs> waving me off films, I'm like, yeah. whoa. And I like everything. <laughs> so, um, yeah, Aquaman I didn't understand because there are so many other characters they could have chosen. To choose Aquaman and then have him not be Aquaman, Yeah, it's like, why not go say Green Arrow? Or just somebody yeah. else, you know? And he... The way he spoke too, he he was a really weird character because in some ways they tried to make him almost the grittiest, and then at the same time anything that was comic relief that wasn't coming from the Flash was coming from Aquaman, which I thought was mm. really strange. He was definitely my biggest problem with this film, aside from he Amy did Adams. not yes he did not work for me, but I think you've covered <laughs> <laughs> You're saving me ragging on this film that I hate. Well, this is the so we, this is great. We, we came here with the intention of me kind of like counterpointing you because um, I actually enjoyed it. But... Can we talk about what is meant to be DC's strong point, which is villains? Yeah, Steppenwolf sucked. See? Just, just a nothing <laughs> villain. I, I mean, I'm only going to bring this up because you're the one who said DC's strong point. I. I found Steppenwolf on par with any Marvel villain. I agree. I, I don't think we've ever really had a good villain for any of these um, comic book films, you know? No. Post-Nolan. I mean, we won't get into Nolan because that's another thing we disagree on, and that's one where we disagree the other direction, because I'm not a Nolan fan. But um, You don't like his quirky, competent <laughs> filmmaking. <laughs> I mean, what's with these people who know how to make films? Fuck them. <laughs> um, I... Uh, yeah, I thought Seven Wolf was fine. You know, he did what he had to do. He served his purpose. Really unengaging. Look, as far as... Uh, I guess for my opinion, this was supposed to be the big... This is what they've been culminating to. This is them all coming together. They could have used a stronger villain for that, for sure. You know, um, interesting that they went Doomsday for BBS instead of this, because he is a much larger villain. They kind of killed their big two villains with Zod and... Doomsday already, mm. so Steppenwolf is, was a weird choice. Like, I have a vague, I've, I've never read a comic in my life, so let's be clear on that. But I, so I have these like vague ideas that there is Steppenwolf and who's his nephew? Is it his nephew? I don't know what you're talking. Dark Side. Oh, Dark Side. Yeah, Dark- I know those names, but I have no idea. I don't. So I have, I have no idea whether the Steppenwolf in this film is a good Steppenwolf. I just know that I didn't think he was good. <laughs> I just, I just thought he was. I just thought he served his purpose. I thought he was absolutely adequate as far as a comic book villain goes. Your thoughts on having another um, doomsday scenario beam of energy into the sky? I mean, thank God. <laughs> what would what would we do without I mean, beams of energy into the sky? In comic know, book films. But like, th- I mean, this is the could things... we not? Can someone not come up with another? 
Simpsons, thing. Are, Simpsons already did it. Oh. <laughs> like, Simpsons have done everything. <laughs> I guess the thing is a comic book film based on a comic book series, and that's the kind of stuff that happens repeatedly over and over in comic books. People seem to forget that these, like you know, Superman first beat in the thirties. So you're now looking at a eighty-year-old comic book series, and you know it's not like network television where you've got maybe ten to twenty episodes a year. You've got hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of issues of this comic series. Doesn't that and mean that there should be good ideas to no, draw from? No, but this is the thing. They're so they're they're very repetitive. They're very you know they retcon a lot of stuff. Like they will all of a sudden say, okay, no, this didn't happen anymore. This is this is, in this universe that that didn't happen. That thing that you've been reading for the last five years never happened. So I think it was all a dream. <laughs> that actually has happened. Awesome. <laughs> yeah, so they just started borrowing from like passions. <laughs> yeah. So like uh, as far as a comic book um, kind of apocalypse goes, I thought it was fine. You know, it it did what it wanted to do. Mm, awesome. Um, <laughs> <laughs> like just, I'm just so over the world ending in these films. See, but what else? Are you, like, what, uh, what, what are the other stakes? Well, uh, like, well, here's the thing. You, you world look at, ending is you look the at worst case scenario. What, what else is can you do? considered by the wider public as the best comic book film to date in The Dark Knight. Yeah. The worst thing that's ever going to happen in that film is that a shipload of people are going to die. Yeah. The good thing about that is that that feels like something that could actually happen. You're like, yeah, the Joker could yes. blow up these people. Yeah. Right? Well, not only And so not you, only you, that. Actually, you can actually invest in that moment. Unlike when the world's going to end and you're like... The world's not going to end. See, but here's the difference. It's not only that. The difference is that that's a Batman movie. And one of the core things about Batman is that he loves his city and wants to protect his city. So in that movie, the only threat is to his city. It's the same as in most Superman cases. The threat is only going to be to the people of Metropolis, whether it's a shipload of people or a, or a, you know, a, a skyscraper load of people. It's the same kind of thing. But in a film like this, where you're bringing an entire team together, the stakes need to be higher than that. And especially when you're dealing with people like Wonder Woman and Aquaman, who are gods, who, you know, like, this needs to be an entire world mm. or, as we've seen in most Marvel movies, an entire universe kind of threat, really, for it to have any kind of stakes. For with a beam of energy going into the sky. Yeah, look, okay, <laughs> maybe they could do something different than that. Like, you know, why not have a mole man who's trying to drill into the ground to hey, destruct the core? Yeah, I'm hey. pretty sure we have seen that in the 70s. But, you know, like, you know what? Yeah, they could do something what like that. What if Stephen Wolf challenged him to a surfing contest? Oh, yes. And Batman could get a shark repellent. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Probably an improvement. We need to briefly talk about Henry Cavill's face. <laughs> so so we knew coming into this film that for the reshoots Henry Cavill had a moustache yeah. for is it the new Mission Impossible? it is yeah and that he couldn't shave it yeah. to do the pickups yeah. for this film yeah. and so there are shots in this film where they've digitally removed yeah that happened Superman's yeah. moustache and you can tell um, <laughs> look again I know that I should not be saying any of this because it, it is Industry what expert, I do Billy. for a living <laughs> But I didn't really... Look, I thought he looked weird, but I kind of just... I don't really have that good a memory in my head of what Henry Cavill looks like, so I was just like, oh, okay, he's a bit of weird looking. It takes, <laughs> it, it takes a bit to make Henry Cavill not look amazing. Well, that's it. That's it. I've been told that it's like looking into the sun. Like, I so mean, handsome, so. You, you were told that by your wife as yes. she was... <laughs> yes, as she was oh. looking at anyone but me. <laughs> <laughs> and I... Yeah. Can, I, can I have a moment of defence for Henry Cavill yes. in, in this film and indeed all the films he's been in? Go for it. I think Henry Cavill does the most with what he's given in these films. He's given very little to work with. He is... Maybe, and maybe like, I'm just being blinded by the form that God clearly took some time out <laughs> he is to very, make. He is a very handsome man. <laughs> that's a good I, look I think dude. the thing is that that's Superman, though. Like, Superman is a bland character. Really. Like, yeah. you know, I love... Um, Superman, but that doesn't mean he's a good character to have to portray because he he's he's just a guy. <laughs> it's really and like that's kind of why I like Superman so much is that he is probably the most normal of all of the superheroes, even though he's an alien. Um, but yeah, I yeah Henry Cavill does not have a lot to work with. All right, I. So ra- <laughs> let's let's get to your rating of this film that you apparently enjoyed, though. <laughs> look, if if you were to look back 
at my IMDb ratings, you will see on Thursday at about 5pm a rating there for this film of 7 out of 10. I was worried it was going to be higher. It, it, was, it wasn't higher. I, I work on a bell curve. <laughs> and so, um, yeah, I went, I went with a 7. Okay. You're saying this... This is an above average film for you. For me, it was above average. I had okay. I had fun watching it, but you know what? Looking back at my IMDb ratings, I maybe have two films that are below average, <laughs> right. so, and, and I, I see about two three movies a week. So, so, you're, <laughs> so you're saying your bell curve is wrong? <laughs> it's less of a bell and more of like a, a bell end. Uh, yeah. <laughs> um, That's right. I modelled my grading system after you. <laughs> Thank you. My my rating for this film is two out of ten. Two. This is not a... This is a bad film. Oh. I initially went... For, for anyone else that, that, that rates films on the IMDb app, I hit... I was like... I sometimes hit a number and kind of give it a moment until I hit... You know, it asks you if you really want that number. See, I do that, but I think I'm terrible at counting. I look at the stars and I'm like, is that like seven one, or eight? Two, and I three. tap it. <laughs> you, you, you got big fingers, though. Um, yeah. yeah. So I, I, I hit three and I looked at the other films that I had rated three and I was yep. like, this film is worse than those films. It's not a one, because the only film I've ever given a one to is Suicide Squad. Academy Award winner Suicide Squad, please. Sorry, at least it's full name. <laughs> Give it its due credit. <laughs> yeah, two. Wow. See, I've got to be honest, I'm, I'm a bit surprised by that, because I, watching this movie, for me, I struggle to see how someone could think it's below average. But, like I said, I skipped out on work, so maybe that's why I enjoyed it as much as mm. I did. And... Like I said, it was Saturday morning and I hadn't been drinking and I'm, I'm a mean sober. So. <laughs> true. You can be very cruel when you're sober. I'll get hammered and watch it again. <laughs> and and then you clearly had a bad day because then you texted me later that day saying that you'd watched another movie that I recommended as good to you. <laughs> yeah. and, Didn't you give that film a nine? I gave it a nine. <laughs> I, uh, War for the Planet of the Apes. War for I the Planet of the Apes. I liked Crit- it a lot. In fairness, critically liked War for the Planet of the Apes. I liked it a lot. Yep. I mean... I was living in Sydney at the time, working on a film. I saw this with a bunch of other visual effects artists. So I guess maybe for me, we were all talking about how stunning The effects it are looked, amazing. How stunning it looked. And I guess maybe that bumped it up for me. Because Weta know what they're doing when it comes to characters. And the amount of life they bring into those apes is stunning. All right. I gave that a nine. I can't believe mm. you gave that a four. Ooh, not a good film. <laughs> um, <laughs> well, <laughs> thank you for listening. If you haven't seen Justice League, don't. <laughs> Watch it, make up your own opinion. Fuck this guy. Who's, who's this? You don't give a shit who this guy is. Cool. All right. Happy movie watching, everyone. Bye.